What's up guys, it's Cam coming at you from the 2.6. Welcome back to Carolina Fragrance Reviews. Well, I got my top 10 designer fall fragrances out of the way and got some transitional fragrances out of the way. We're getting pretty close to starting getting some fall weather. Yes, it has been a little bit warmer, but we have been getting some cool nights and some cool mornings actually a little bit early so i'm pretty stoked and have a really nice unique top 10 niche lineup let's get into this before we get started make sure that you look down at your subscribe button if it's red see if you can't turn that thing gray for me your support is greatly appreciated Coming in at number 10 is actually one of my absolute favorite fragrances from Mansara. It has some oud, some vanilla, some saffron, some cardamom, some nice woodiness. It is a oud vanille. Now, primarily what you're going to get in this is kind of a kind of like a dark woodsy vanilla. And of course, you're going to get that, you know, that sort of oud, but it's not an animalic oud at all. It's more of like a kind of a synthetic oud in a way, but not in a bad way if, you know, if that's passable. The performance on this thing is absolutely amazing. It's stellar. It's got a little bit of a smokiness to it. The dry down on it is absolutely fantastic. But a little word of warning, I uh, don't overspray this and when you're wearing this indoors, be mindful that it does project in a very beastly manner. Coming in at number nine is a spicy, boozy tobacco and leather fragrance that was inspired by the old cafes in the 50s and 60s with some Bob Dylan playing on the radio. It is Juicebox Beat Cafe. Now, this fragrance has rarely been talked about. I have featured it a couple of times. I find that it is perfect for this time of year. This fragrance opens really spicy and boozy. And then as it dries down, you start picking up little hints of that leather and tobacco. The cognac note is the star of the show for me. Uh, the tobacco in here is really nice as well. You're gonna pick up a little bit of that tobacco on the opening, but primarily where that's really gonna come through is the dry down. This one also has above average projection and performance and a highly underrated fragrance that I absolutely adore. Coming in at number eight is the latest release from Beach Giza. It is Bay Rum. This fragrance has been like on my radar for quite some time. I actually got to sample like the one of the original mods for this fragrance and it actually has come a long way. It was good like on one of the first modifications that I got to get just a tiny little sample to you know get my nose on but the finished product uh, I think that this is going to be a really good top seller for Beach Giza. Now those of you who are not familiar with Beach Giza they do have some very lively fragrances for the summer. They've got, you know, there's a couple of them and you know, like Coco Moon, that's one I'm sure that you may have heard of that had a lot of hype for summertime. This is the first time I've smelled a fragrance that is more like centered for fall. This one does have bay leaf on the opening. It's obviously gonna have some rum, some cinnamon, so it's like a like spicy booziness. It also has some benzoin and nutmeg. It does have some other notes, but those are the ones that I pick up primarily. So you're gonna get that nice spicy boozy uh, resinous feel to this fragrance. And it does somehow kind of have like that Beach Giza signature on it. If you've smelled any of the Beach Giza fragrances, there's, I don't know what it is. There's just like a little magic touch in there that still has that little signature that lets you know that it's Beach Giza. This fragrance is boozy heaven for me. I mean, I absolutely adore boozy scents, especially this time of year, right on into winter. I think this would be perfect for fall and winter, but for me, it really just kind of screams fall. It has excellent projection, excellent performance, and the dry down is absolutely magical. Coming in at number seven is a smooth, sexy, sensual, just really, really, really yummy tobacco and honey fragrance. It is Churgy from Serge Luton. This is such a great fragrance. There is an addictive element that just absolutely kills me. I blew through my first bottle so freaking quick. It was unbelievable. 
Um, there are a few fragrances that have hay in them where, you know, when you hear hay, you think, okay, that's going to be weird. I actually think that the hay in this gives it just a, you know, just a slight little bit of a earthiness, but at the same time makes it like super, super smooth. The honey in here is to die for. But you're also going to get some iris and some sandalwood that's going to give it just a slight powderiness. And if you're not a big fan of iris, this still might work for you. I would recommend, you know, getting a sample of it. But primarily what I get is kind of like that hay with that honey, the tobacco. You can detect the iris if you know what it smells like, but don't let, you know, the note of iris throw you off. And of course, sandalwood can come off a little bit, you know, creamy or powdery as well. But I would just describe this as super, super sexy and smooth. Another note that I pick up on the dry down is amber. This has above average projection and performance. I mean, it's not like over the moon, but I would say, you know, it does go above like that six and a half, seven hour mark. I probably get around eight, which I consider to be above average. So if you've not checked out the Chirgi, you need to. Coming in at number six is a fragrance that was perfumed by master perfumer Francis Kirk John. It is MFK's Grand Suar. Now, those of you who know me know that like early on, you know, like when this first was getting a lot of hype, I didn't understand the hype. There were other fragrances that I had that were like amber based or Tonka based that I don't know. I guess maybe I had too many fragrances that were in that wheelhouse that were still different from each other where I just didn't appreciate this. So I was kind of like, eh, what's the big deal? It, you know, it wasn't I thought that it smelled bad. I just didn't get the hype, but the more time that I spent with it, the more times that I smelled it on other people, I was like, okay, yeah, I can, I can really mess with that fragrance. It's warm, it's sweet, it's resinous. You've got some benzoin, you got some tonka, vanilla, amber. It's just fall goodness. It just goes to show that sometimes fragrances, you know, may not work for you in the beginning and actually wind up as one of your favorite fragrances later on. So I do retract my previous statements from pff, two years ago, something like that. So just in case, I'm not sure how many times this has been featured since then, but yeah, it's, it's worthy of, uh, you know, even a top five, even though I had this placed at six. So I know some of you are probably like, well, why didn't you have it at five? Because the next fragrance, I actually got, you know, frailed a little bit because I didn't have it in my designer list and I promised it would be in my niche. But the reason that there's confusion between it being a designer or niche is because it's niche at a designer price. I am talking about Guerlain's IDL EDP. This fragrance is absolutely one of my most complimented for this time of year. It has excellent performance and projection, especially for the price tag on it. This one has notes of almond, vanilla, leather, and tonka bean that actually kind of gives a cherry vibe. Those of you who know, you know, this is that one of, oh yes, yeah, so, so freaking good. And like I said, again, I hate to keep saying, you know, it's, it's inexpensive, it's inexpensive. Out of this lineup, it's gonna be by far the least expensive of the lot and you know, extremely high quality. And did I mention compliments galore with this one? Yeah. Coming in at number four is a fragrance that's actually been compared to Spice Bomb or Spice Bomb Extreme, or even been called the Niche Spice Bomb. It is Anishio's Rehab. Now this does smell like a, you know, smoother and more well-balanced Spice Bomb. Now Spice Bomb and Spice Bomb Extreme are fantastic fragrances, absolutely. But if there was a niche version of it, it would be Rehab. Now, I know a lot of ladies that like to wear this. Um, you know, you think Spice Bomb, ladies. This is definitely unisex. It's not like super spicy the way that Spice Bomb is, but it does have a very similar DNA. Some of the notes in this one are gonna be bergamot, lavender, cedar and sandalwood, and patchouli. Now I get absolutely stellar performance and sillage with this. This one is also very much a compliment magnet. And because it is, you know, so smooth, I can see where the ladies would actually enjoy this a little bit more than like Spice Bomb 
from Victor and Rolf or Spice Bomb Extreme. On the dry down of this fragrance is actually where it evolves and kind of separates itself just a little bit from a Spice Bomb type DNA. You're gonna get a little bit of that lavender on the dry down mixed with like some guayac wood and some really sexy musk. I don't know if you guys have smelled the Magnetic Blend 7, if I'm not mistaken, from Initia Parfums Purvey. Uh, it's just basically like a real super sexy musk fragrance. The musk in this smells very, very similar to that. So if you've smelled that and you know what type of musk that is, I can't say definitively that it's the same musk that they've used in this. It does remind me of that a lot. If you happen to be looking for any of the brands that I'm sharing with you right now or other brands like Tom Ford and even Yves Saint Laurent in the La Vista de Parfum, go to www fragrance usa get 15 dollars off on nishane hachiva or ani or go down in the chat let them know that you're a subscriber from carolina fragrance reviews and get your own custom discount coming in at number three is a fragrance that actually reminds me of the north carolina state fair uh yeah that's that's a no-go this year. Halloween's been canceled just like everything else. And I'm sure that's the same for the majority of you as well. Uh, certain places are kind of getting back to normal. Hopefully this COVID thing will be past us soon, but let's hang on to those memories. Let's stay strong. Let's take care of each other and maybe spray a fragrance like Hobdun from Parfums de Marley. I have mentioned before how this fragrance really makes me think about the State Fair. It does have kind of like a caramel apple vibe in here. It definitely has like a nice green Granny Smith apple note in here mixed with some real sexy caramel. You also have some myrrh in here, some warm wood notes mixed with some saffron. It's just a really sexy fragrance. I found this to be an extremely sexy but cozy fragrance. So, I mean, it would actually be, for me anyway, like appropriate for date night or, you know, just like that, you know, cuddle and chill kind of night or whatever. Either way, you know, if it was in a cabin, uh, you know, with no television and just the fire lit, you know, if it was cool night, I think this would be absolutely perfect for this. It does have above average performance and sillage. I have actually heard people compare this to Hugo Boss Bottled. I see what you guys mean. To me personally, Hugo Boss Bottled smells more like apple pie, like sweet apple pie that's maybe a little heavier on vanilla where on this you're gonna get that myrrh and you're gonna get that green apple note. It's not quite as sweet. Uh, you do get a little more woods in this one. So yeah, I do see what you guys mean by that. But to me, I mean, I understand the comparison, but still very much a you know separate and different fragrance. This one is definitely, you know, like much higher quality. And I, don't get me wrong, I love, you know, the Hugo Boss line. I think that is a good fragrance, but still a little more synthetic, not nowhere as good a performance and projection. So, I mean, if you did want an inexpensive alternative for this, you know, Hugo Boss bottle would be okay, but still completely different fragrance. Coming in at number two is from Carner Barcelona. It is a fragrance that are pretty well divided on. They either love it or they're like, eh, it's not worth the buy. So the first time I smelled this, it was on a friend of mine. He was like, have you smelled D600? And I was like, no, I haven't. And at that time I had not, he had it in his truck. I checked it out, I smelled it, I was like, mm. Now it worked for me. Now, if you're a fan of vanilla, you may or may not like this fragrance because to me, I feel that it is really built around vanilla, but a lot of people, you know, get like a lot of iris in here. I see what you mean. I do get some of that iris as well, but to me, it is more of like an earthy vanilla with some iris. To me, this is a very, very sexy fragrance. Uh, I do know some people that find iris fragrances sexy. This one opens up very spicy. You are gonna get some of that iris. It's gonna have some earthiness about it. Uh, the vanilla in here is not like super sweet, so don't think like gourmand vanilla. I think it, I mean, it is a tad sweet, but to me, it's more of like a earthy, sexy, sultry type of fragrance. D600 does dry down kind of a powdery, spicy vanilla. Still find it very sexy. Very mass appealing, above average performance and projection. Let me know what you think about D600. Coming in at number one is one of the most underrated 
Killian fragrances and one that I am very much looking forward to wearing and have been wearing already this fall. It is Gold Night. Now this is known for its really sexy and sultry dark honey and patchouli and on the top you're going to get that star anise which is really really good it does almost have like a clean vibe my friend andrew from curly sense actually said that this fragrance reminded her of like a real high-end swanky hotel or resort i see what she meant by that and i actually kind of think that every time i smell this now but oh yeah that fresh cleanness that you're gonna get from that anise and it also has a little bit of bergamot on the top but the honey and the patchouli on the dry down are what's like really, really sexy. You're also gonna get some vanilla mixed with that patchouli and that honey, which just is like mwah, perfecto. This is sexy, it's sultry, it's seductive, it's clean, it's classy. It's, this fragrance on my skin is actually one of the absolute best performing fragrances from Killian. This one just really, really lasts on my skin and pulls in compliments like you would not believe. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. Again, if you have not subscribed to the channel, I would greatly appreciate it. Smash that like button for me. Go down in the comments and let me know what your favorite niche fragrance for fall is. Until next time, I'll see you on Carolina Fragrance Reviews.